Large-scale battery storage is one of the most dynamic marketplaces, both here in Europe and also internationally. Here at the 2017 InterSolar Europe, it's one of, been one of the key talking points, adding storage both to grids and also to existing solar and wind installations. Maya Hens is the uh, marketing and PR manager for Nidec ASI, who is one of the market leaders in the space. Um, can you tell me how the market is evolving for large-scale storage in Europe, first of all? Well, in Europe right now, I think it's sort of at a standstill. If we look at what's happened in Italy, obviously, Terna has uh, uh, tried to evolve and invest more in energy storage, but um, they're really not certain um, because of the legislation in Italy where they want to go with that. So um, that market is is at a standstill. If we look at France, France, what they did was they went out and they um, did all of their tendering for PV uh, with obviously the obligation to do PV plus battery energy storage. Now there will be another set of tenders coming out from the French government shortly and of course all of the battery energy storage that we see in France will be connected to those PV uh, projects that are coming up. Um, in the UK there was the 200 megawatt national grid um, tender that came out of which we won 30 percent of that uh, working with E.ON and EDF and uh, we're now waiting uh, obviously for the next national grid tender which has been postponed. So I think uh, when we look at the European market we're going to see a lot more behind the meter applications that are going to be coming on uh, driven primarily by large organizations that want to be green. So we're looking at um, uh, large department stores that are putting in these uh, battery energy storage and PV solutions uh, just to improve their image or because they really believe that they are reducing their CO2. This is, makes a strong contribution to their reducing their CO2 footprint. Well, one of the, the projects that people were talking about last year was the 90 megawatt hour um, um, frequency regulation battery array installed here in Germany. It's quite an extraordinary project. Can you give me an update? Where, where is that at at the moment? So we've just completed all of the commissioning on the six sites. We're really proud of that. Um, we've had sign off from the customer. The customer is happy, which is always uh, satisfaction. Um, we did the uh, first site in six months and then rolled out each additional site uh, one month after. So we were able to do the complete project in 12 months. And as I said, that that's for frequency regulation. Um, but we often hear about multiple revenue streams for large scale storage. How, how is that actually playing out and evolving in Europe today? Um, well, that's a good question. I've had a lot of discussion on this and um, the analogy I always use, it's like a car. So if you buy your car and you're only using your car to go to grocery shopping on Sunday, um, you're not going to get much consumption of it. It's going to be in perfect condition after 20 years. Well, if you use it to go on a rally and you're doing uphill and downhill and off-road and uh, within a few months it's going to be in pretty bad condition. And that's kind of true also with batteries. You really have to know what you're going to be using it for. So when we talk about about these multiple um, revenue streams coming out of these batteries, it is doable, but it does require a significant amount of study because um, you need to be able to say, um, or at least have some sort of a simulation of how you're going to be using it, you know, how, how much of a depth of discharge or what's your going to be your, uh, your C rate, so how often are you going to be charging and discharging it. Um, and, and so you have to have some sort of idea of how often am I going to be using it for frequency regulation, how often am I going to be using it for power shifting, um, and you kind of have to stick to that just to make sure that you're getting optimum use out of your batteries. Um, so we have had conversations with a lot of developers that are looking at that. Um, we've gone in and we've actually sized the project. Sometimes you have to oversize the batteries. Um, Frankly speaking, how that particular segment of the field is going to evolve, I don't know. It's really interesting. Um, again, we've had a lot of discussion, but when people sit down and look at the math, um, they still haven't quite figured out. I think the battery pricing has to come down um, a little bit further before you can really start talking about doing all of that value stacking that they call. Um, so today we really see specific applications and specific problems that people are solving. So it's frequency regulation, it's power balancing or uh, load shifting. Um, or it's backup power uh, or renewable integration, which is also a major driver right now, as everybody knows. Well, and to, to access these value streams and to get the best performance out of a battery, you also need some smarts in the battery or, some, or, or, or in fact, the management system really needs to be able to um, optimize the performance of the product and also how and when it's going to operate. What experience um, has NEDEC developed in terms of um, smart operation strategies or, or smart algorithms for storage? Right. 
Well, our power management system was designed for a complete microgrid. We actually started out from the um, idea that in the future the transmission and distribution line will be a set of small micro islands that are attached to a main transmission and distribution line. So um, we already tackled, let's say, the more challenging project looking at how is this system going to be designed. It has to go work on grid and off grid and our power management system does. We do the synchronization with the with the grid, which is one of the key challenges. Because um, obviously if you're trying to hook up to a grid, you don't want to create a blackout. So that's really a key function on, on our system that we're quite proud of. Um, we have worked with all of the different battery technologies and also with various uh, battery topologies. Um, so on the Turner project, for example, we've worked with NGK, we've worked with um, Samsung, we've worked with uh, uh, LG Chem, uh, FIAM, uh, Gildemeister. So we have a significant amount of experience in different battery uh, topologies and different battery manufacturers right now. Um, we have about 430 megawatt hours um, actually installed in the world today. Um, so we have a significant track record and a significant amount of experience um, in battery management. And obviously, we're putting all of that experience back into our system. So it's getting smarter and smarter every day. Well, and we continue to learn and we, uh, as the industry continues to evolve. Kyla Haynes from NEDEC ASI, thank you very much for your time. A very interesting marketplace here at Intersolar 2017.